It's a beautiful June summer morning, about 10 o'clock. I am at Rannoch Station, which is the end of the road in terms of the road that comes west from Pit Lockery, past Kinloch Rannoch and Loch Rannoch and all those places. And today I am headed up. It doesn't look much from here. This hill over here, Stop the Kruika, which while it doesn't look much, it, uh, it lords it over Rannoch Moor. Uh, it's not a hill I've been up before, but by all accounts it has a pretty good view of that enormous expanse of bog. So we'll see more of that when we get up there, but that's where I'm headed. Yep, it does go all the way to Glencoe, believe it or not. But as a sign in the station said, a little warning sign, it said, walkers were advised this is not an area to trifle with. It's a lovely wording, which puts it rather mildly because Rannoch Moor is a, an enormous expanse of bog that famously you can swim across in summer and skate across in winter. And it's not something you'd want to venture into, even if it was on a path without due consideration of weather and getting stuck in bogs and all that kind of thing. So it may say footpath to Glencoe, but you'd want to think twice before you did it. Hello. But as you can see from the glimpses of blue through the trees, it's a very nice day and it has been dry for weeks and if you were to go strolling across Rannoch Moor today I'm sure you'd find a lot of the peat is drying out on the surface hence no gators today because I've got every confidence it's going to be a nice dry ascent of this hill You hear that squeaking? That's my bag strap. It's driving me insane. A bit of wind would actually be nice, so I can't actually hear it. Oh well. Can't complain when you don't get wind and you get a nice day in Scotland. Just take it and use it. Gaining height quite quickly using this track. Uh, just to, for orientation's sake, so we know where we are. Loch Rannoch is over there. That little notch there, that's Shehalion, which um, it's a running joke with some with a friend of mine that every time we, every time anyone goes anywhere in Scotland up a hill, that if there's anything triangular on the horizon, people go, "Ooh, it's Shehalion." Nine times out of ten, it isn't, but that definitely is. Ah, I haven't seen these in a while. Uh, seen these before. It's uh, butterwort, which is, it's not in flower yet, there'll be a little blue flower coming out of there. But you can see these little black dots. They're dead midges and things, because uh, it's a carnivorous plant. We've got a few of them. A couple of them, is it this one and sundew, are sort of the well known ones in this country. You wouldn't think we have them, but we do. I think it's the same sort of principles venus flytraps and that sort of thing where they have digestive enzymes on here and it's a bit sticky yeah so see i don't know if you can see that i just there see there's something in between my forefinger and thumb and that is what sticks the insects to the plant and then the plant digests them there you go gruesome but marvelous we need more of them in the, this part of the world to eat up all the midges
quiet. Just birds. <coughs> and some water I can hear over there. It's hard to comprehend just how much nothingness there is over there. It's hard to gauge distance on this phone, I imagine, but it just looks like it goes on forever. Oh, it's hard work. You don't really get a sense of how difficult it is to travel through country like this until you start getting to all these peat hags and features. You may think you can just go straight to the top of that hill or straight down this one, that's where I've come from. But you're always having to snake your way up and then you have to stop and go around something. And it, you end up doing probably twice the distance you want to do. And it's so dry. All I can hear is sort of the crunching of dry grass underneath my feet when really I should be hearing squelching. It's quite unusual. I'm not complaining, but ooh, make a leap. It does give a sense of what unforgiving landscape most of Scotland is covered by. Oh, just approaching the intermediate summit. I'm probably about the halfway point and there's I don't think gravestones or or what John McLaren Pearson Jock uh, 1894 to 1975 Possum Rosabel Rosabel Constance Pearson Lindy her name there 1909 to 1976 So whoever she was she died a year after her husband by the looks of it how funny. That's so strange. I've never come across anything like that uh, in the hills in, in Scotland, really. Not up on the top of a hill like that. I wonder if they're actually buried here. Ooh, what a place to end up. Which way they were looking? If they were looking that way, or whether they've been positioned to look this way. If it's, if it's like that, I can always imagine they're holding hands, looking at Shihalian. Maybe that was their favourite view or something. Maybe not. Maybe just an old romantic. But that's a nice view. Yeah, there you go. That's the two of them. With that view of Shihalian forever. Well, I'm starting to get a sense now of the view opening up over here so close to the last few meters just see the can post what's it thing up there and hopefully in just a few steps there should be the reveal ooh there we go how about that wow <laughs> what a superb day! Oh my goodness! Rannoch Moor, 50 square miles of peat and bog and water over there. Bukalet of Moor, arguably, if Scotland had a national mountain, that would be it. The one that everybody photographs over there in that dip, that's Glen Etive. And the A, is it the A82? I forget. The road to Fort William curves over the moor, over its far reaches over there. But nothing else really gets in here. And if you walked from Rannoch Station over there to Glencoe, you'd have to walk all the way through here. It looks very beautiful under these conditions. Just a bit of water, but you can well imagine that when it's been raining a lot, and the mist's down, and the whole thing is just a, a, one big bog, squelchy bog, it's not something you really want to venture out into, and it's why Robert Louis Stevenson in Kidnapped wrote uh, a wearier looking desert a man has never seen, which is essentially to say it looks bloody awful. Not today though.
It's bloody amazing today. You can see how it's essentially a huge bowl with 3,000 foot mountains over 3,000 feet over here and away to the west. And then standing on the 2,000 foot plateau along here. So it's all sort of just this big bowl that was left when the ice retreated around 10,000 years ago. This was the last place in Scotland, I think, that actually had ice. Uh, and it's now suffering from glacial rebound, as uh, I think it's known. The whole country is suffering from glacial rebound when all that weight of ice in the ice age is now gone. The country is still lifting up and Scotland is raising up by centimetres or inches each year. But what goes up must come down, which means that the south of England is going down. So bye bye Dover. But uh, here, the, the, apparently the, the moor is actually rising by uh, several millimetres each year as it bounces back after the ice age. The railway for Rannoch cuts all the way along here, over here, nothing else reaches here. Rannoch is very remote but it has road access and then the railway cuts along here and then there's a station out there somewhere called Kura and that has no road access at all. It's the most remote station, railway station on the, the, British, on the British rail network. Because this is all bog, people had a hell of a time actually building the railway. It had to be floated on enormous big piles of branches and sticks and debris that they could find. It was opened in 1894, the West Highland Line, and it cuts all the way along here. And it did have problems with it sinking. Right, but now I'm actually up here. It's definitely time just to sit and enjoy the view. Oh, that's a bit, oh my god. <laughs> I don't know what these are, but they're everywhere, buzzing around. Look, there's loads of them on there. Oh, lovely. At least they're not midges, that's all I can say. They are swarming on me though. Look at that, what are these? I don't know why they find me appealing. Anyway. Right. Change your clothes, nice and dry, and kitted out for the late afternoon sun. Time to start down. was somebody's house long ago, you can see the hearth over there, but it looks like a boffy. May oh no, maybe not. It's not very weather tight. of William Connor, please deliver in 20 years of this date, 22nd of March 2013. Dundee, Scotland, only one on Facebook. Hello, my name is William Con Connor, I'm from Dundee and I've walked from Pitlochry and I'm aiming for Cape Wrath, 233 miles to go. I decided to leave this book, maybe you can write your story of travel or draw pictures. I am hoping to come here in 20 years time to find this again. Be safe, William Connor, Dundee, a beautiful place deserves a beautiful book. And two people have been here, somebody called Maris, John Moffat, who was here 5th of June, that's just a few days ago, camping for two nights. Well, I'm going to have to leave something. How a fantastic thing to find. I'm so chuffed at the things I found today. Those gravestones, those markers, and now this. Completely unexpected. It's wonderful. There we go, just put it back again. So it's a beautiful book as well. It's leather with well, some sort of waterproof paper, I think, or something, but really, really nice. There we go, put that back. I have to say, that's that's made my day finding that. There's no exaggeration. I find it quite touching. A little lovely thing to do. A lovely find. Beautiful place. I'll have to come back here at some point. That 
final look back before I crest that hill and that view disappears for the day. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's just so still, so quiet. for a bike.